Watch this for a secret trainer hack on how to develop a very symmetrical body. Move in the sagittal, frontal, and transverse plane. What's that? Watch this. Next caller is Nate from Texas. What's up, Nate? How can we help you? What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing, man? Good, 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 man. What's up? Hey, man, I just want to say it's exciting, man. It's good to it's good to be able to be on here, man, because uh, this is like something so new for me. I don't, I've never actually been involved in some stuff like this, so it's cool. It's cool, man. <laughs> uh, so I just want to say I appreciate y'all. Everything y'all do, man, is cool. Y'all send a just a super positive message. The vibes y'all send, y'all help so many people. So I just want to say that off the rip. Uh, now my my whole my whole deal here is that I've I've been training for a while, man. I've been, you know, implementing a lot of different things, and I've been learning all this new stuff. I've actually been studying to be a personal trainer now, um, and when I'm when I'm trying to create these programs, what's going on is I'm, I'm learning. You know, I need to incorporate all these different planes of motion. You know, and I need to I need to make sure I'm doing transverse. Uh, I need to. You know, I need to in- incorporate sagittal and frontal, but when I'm creating a single workout, you know, I'm trying to figure out, is it best for me to incorporate all the three planes of motion into one workout, or should I try to, like, phase different planes of motion? Now, I know that, like, when you're doing, like, speed and agility and balance, you really kind of want to focus uh, your your attention on certain like uh, performance aspects, but when I'm doing a single workout, you know, sometimes I get caught in the in the mode where I just want to I want to do all these bench press and and all these rows and I want to do these pull ups and you know when I feel like for the general public, the best way for the general public would be to kind of incorporate a little bit of everything. But then again, in one single workout, I also feel like it's best to just focus on certain things at, at one time. So that's really my, my issue is when I'm creating a single workout, how is it best to incorporate either all three planes of motion or should I be phasing or breaking it up into different segments? Yeah, Nate. Cool, so cool question. Welcome yeah. to the world of, of personal training. So he, he, <laughs> yeah. here's your answer. They're both right. So yeah, yeah. It depends. Right. Who, yeah. So it depends who you're working with, uh, what the goal is, the rep ranges, if you're focusing on strength or speed yeah. or – just what body health. parts, general health. I mean, both are fine. Both are totally fine. I would You're look right. at I would look at a little bit more broad. So maybe throughout the week, you definitely want to incorporate all uh, three planes of motion in one workout. You don't necessarily have to. I mean, you can do, you know, squats, overhead press, bench press, and rows in one workout, and then the next workout, now you can incorporate some something, you know, rotational lateral. Um, right. So I would look at it more like that, but. It depends who I'm working with and what their goals are and how their body's moving. And so this is why it's it's an almost impossible question to answer. I think the general answer for the general person would be to make sure you incorporate all of them throughout the week, I, yeah. I would say. Yeah. But again, that can change depending on the person I'm working with. With some people, I would do it every workout. And with other people, I would maybe do it a little less if we need to focus more. Like if I'm just focusing on strength, like I got a, yeah. I got a, a kid I'm training – we're trying to pack on some muscle and some strength. They're not necessarily playing any sports. Then I'm going to be okay avoiding certain planes of motion when I'm just trying to pack on mass. And then later on, I'm going to start to incorporate more of those planes of motion. It depends right. on the person. It really does. So there's no clear, you know, I can't give you a, a straight 100% answer with this one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you'll notice, I, I bet you've gone through like our mass performance and like, I, I don't know if you've gone through. I just it. haven't had a chance, man. Okay. I, it, I've got so much stuff going on. I got kids and everything else. It's just yeah. been a, yeah. it's kind of tough getting into stuff but uh, it's more of a like a personal deal i want to be able to figure it out you know within myself you know it, it's just like y'all say it you're always it, you're always the worst trainer for yourself you know so like <laughs> yeah, I, sure. I i i focus on a lot of stuff myself but then whenever i'm able to talk to other people i can give such good advice but it's so hard to follow it so i really want to learn more for myself that way i can show other people and that's really where i'm at yeah, what I was alluding to was we actually had like a devoted section, a phase uh, for multiplanar movement. And um, that was intentional because of the lack of, of that focus in a lot of programming, especially when you mentioned, um, 
you know, just real strength pursuits uh, where we're trying to reduce it down to just a few exercises that give you the most bang uh, that are usually bilateral loaded uh, and it's in the sagittal plane. And so, you know, it can, it's nice and controlled that way. So we can build a nice base, uh, you right. know, in terms of strength. But uh, what where your mindset is, I think, is great because we really do need to um, consider all those different other functions that the body's capable of. So that way we don't, um, you know, sort of prune that off to where we're yeah, not. Yeah, we don't want to miss it out. Right. So, so I do think that, um, incorporating a phase specific is, you know, an option, uh, you know, sprinkling them in, in terms of complementary exercises to the strength phases you could do. Uh, so yeah, there really isn't like a, a very definitive answer to this other than just keep that in mind that there's, um, you know, these other planes we need to consider and keep that movement happening. I listen that you, uh, you've already won half the battle. The fact that you recognize the importance of it and that you're trying to figure out how to program it, you're already ahead of the game. Most well, so, and, and basically saying the same thing that the guys are saying, the reason why no one's giving you this definitive answer, because you could, you could play with this. I mean, that's the fun part about being a trainer is that you, you know, you recognize the importance of incorporating all the different planes and so, you know, maybe one client, I decide I'm going to do a phase like Justin was just talking about how we do in performance. Then maybe another client, I'm just going to do a day, right? So maybe I have like what Sal was saying, like a kid who's really focused on being strong. And that is his main goal that he's telling me. But I also recognize the importance of training in different planes with him. So maybe the, you know, two or three of the workouts during the week are very, you know, MAPS anabolic strength type of programming, very sagittal plane based, the same kind of planes of motion. And then one day a week, I have a, a whole day dedicated to all the other planes and we do right. some dynamic stuff in there. And so there's a lot of different ways that you can play where every day I incorporate yeah. a rotational a transverse plane type. So you could do some fun stuff here and, and play around with it. And it does really, like Sal was saying, depend on the client's goal. Mm -hmm. Whatever the client's goal is, I want to spend a bulk of my time addressing that adaptation, whatever yeah, it may be, whether okay. it be building strength, uh, body fat, you know, sculpting and, and, and developing a certain muscle. That's where the bulk of my programming is. But as, uh, you know, keeping integrity as a trainer and knowing that it's important for overall joint health and longevity, I want to make sure they can train in all planes. I'm going to incorporate it at least yeah. somewhat within the program. And how much of that would really depend on how focused they are or how much I think they need that, like, or how much they're potentially lacking it. And you can, you yeah. can accomplish this too, through mobility drills, uh, in ways of doing that without a loaded, uh, oh, exercise. Yeah, so, good. you know, you can, you can do this as primers. We do this before our workouts, even, uh, to address, uh, certain rotational movements and joint function. So that way we get it to respond better within the workouts. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot of ways you can sort of implement this, not just, uh, having to, prescribe the entire workout devoted to multiple planes. Nate, do, Nate, do you have mass performance? I, I don't. Uh, you, I you just do haven't now. You that. Yeah. Had a chance. Yeah. I haven't really had a chance go, to go, go through, through it. But, uh, we, you, we're going to send it to you, okay? Yeah, yeah we're going to send it over hey, to you. Bro, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm super appreciative. Like, I, That's really one of the things I've really been wanting to do is actually run a, a, a real program a good one, uh, good, good you know, deal. but that's, that's like, I'm super appreciative. So fo that. follow Thank that, you. follow that program, Nate. And then after you go through that, from what we've just talked to you about, I think you'll have a really good idea yeah, on yeah. how to go from there and incorporate it for okay. your clients. Yeah. There's a lot of different tools in there and there's a lot of different ways that you can use the tools in there for your future clients. And, but the one thing I think you should do and, and stick to it, follow the program as it's laid out so you can get the full benefits of everything that we did in there. And then after that, you can pluck and pull whatever you like and implement it into your yeah. own program. Thank, thanks for calling awesome. in, Nate. I appreciate hey, it. Hey, man. Thank y'all, man. Y'all keep being good. Keep being you, man. Y'all doing so much great stuff, man. I appreciate you. Thank, thank you, Nate. Nate. Thank you. I like Nate. Love that dude's yeah, energy. No, I love, that, love guy. that guy's energy. Yeah, you know, with the when it comes to the different planes, I, what you said, Justin, was I'm so glad you said that. You don't have to do loaded hypertrophy-based exercises in all the planes mm -hmm. necessarily. You can do you know much of that in the maybe sagittal plane, and then do dynamic mobility stuff in some of the other. Well, planes. especially since the yep. point you brought up about you know if you had a kid, let's say twenty five year old kid, 
relatively pretty healthy, good mobility, good decent movement, not dealing with any sort of joint pain, anything. Just wants to get big, build some yeah, muscle. We're going to focus on strength. Yeah, in the yeah, yeah. The 90, be the 90, majority of it. Ninety percent of the workouts going to look very maps anabolic s, but then you can take elements from like performance and mobility days, yeah. like just now. It's a great point. And you just just to keep that just to keep them mobile in different parts. Now I will say, when it comes to building a, a balanced, symmetrical physique, even just from an aesthetic standpoint, focusing on the different planes is a bit of a hack because it does work all the muscles of the body and does develop a lot of balance. And you know, aesthetics isn't just how you look when you're stationary. Mm -hmm. There's aesthetics with how you walk and move, and training in those different planes develops aesthetic movement so we, we've all seen the meathead in the gym that if you posed for a picture would look okay but then you see them moving something doesn't look right and oftentimes that comes from just lack of movement ability in different planes they always train in one particular way well this is the reason why we were all very adamant about the second program being performance totally right i mean in the in the ideal world pretty much regardless of your goal whether it's overall health fat loss muscle building yeah, i don't care doesn't matter what yeah. your goal is the ideal way to follow the pro programs where we laid them out is anabolic first performance and then aesthetic from there there's lots of different pathways and we can get into customizing it but for the general population regardless of your goals we really tried to address all the main things we'd want a client to focus on in those three programs. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.